Jambo jambo E jambo watoto wa Afrika This is the I Lead Africa show and on this episode we profile Aniko Owoko. Aniko Owoko is a leading entertainment publicist and a journalist in Kenya with a degree in journalism and media studies from the University of Nairobi. I wanted to be <laughs> so many things, doctor once, a lawyer, mm. an architect, a musician, mm. I could have been anything. She is passionate in arts and culture and has been working in the entertainment industry. Uh, maybe seeing them dance with Obama and taking that video and posting. Aniko runs a PR agency called Aniko PR that mainly represents music stars. Her work experience has brought her in contact with several musicians and various professionals in the music industry across Africa, making her very conversant with the ever-changing entertainment industry. It meant a lot because um, he's a legend. I mean, everybody knows Kofi is a legend. My mom is such a fan, so she always told me a story how they went to see Kofi back in the days, like in the 90s. And she's like, oh, we couldn't see him because it was so crowded. So I was telling Kofi the same story and he was like, she should come to my concert. It was nice to meet him. It's just like some people are so legendary that you think they're not human. And then when you meet them, you're like, oh, so you're just human like us. It was really cool. It was really dope. Like, he even posted the picture I took with him on his Instagram. Some of Aniko's projects include steering the Saoji Souls brand and image since inception, having worked as their only publicist and occasional to a manager. It's it like the cleanest city, mm -hmm. the people are nice, mm -hmm. the weather is nice, uh, the people are quite organized. Aniko worked as a PR manager and coordinator for BBC World Service Trust Africa Talks Climate Kenya Concert. She also worked as a publicist for the Kenyan Kwani Trust event launched for the Chimo Mandangozi Adichie's Americana and Dust by Yvonne Athiambo, a war. Her other projects include writing, broadcast, fashion and blogging. Well, Grapevine is a show I love. It's on KBC and I've been hosting it for some time, about five years now. And um, it's Kenya's premier um, entertainment magazine show. It's actually Kenya's longest running entertainment magazine show. So what we basically do is, um, you know, attend events and concerts, interview celebrities and personalities. So um, what we're doing is documenting the changing trends in the art and culture scene, especially in Nairobi. Although now we, we do it all over Kenya as well, and also East Africa. You know, we go to Zanzibar, Tanzania, Uganda for events. Aniko is confident, creative, ambitious, and very warm-hearted. We fully understand why she has become a role model for many young and people. Musicians mainly produce. Keep the fire burning. And tell them the truth. There's nothing to lose. No. You keep the fire burning. important to me because it's everything especially um, if you live in Africa you know everybody says Africa is, is the future but the future is now so in whatever field you work in and in whatever field I've been working in and that's the same with South so even in terms of music we always want to be the leaders in that field so it's very important to me because it's the basis of, of my work with South Soul 
and that's how we started as friends. You know, we always wanted to get to a certain level. Mm -hmm. We always wanted to, to lead and to lead by a good example, okay? So, so that's what we've done and we try to continue to do. So even as their publicists, that's how I try to, to put them out. Because when they achieve something, you know, what else can you achieve? So that's, that's the biggest challenge. Why is what you do so important? Okay. What I do is so important to me because, um, one, I'm passionate about it. Two, it's my bread and butter. And um, three, I'm, I'm very proud of it because um, it left me content, you know, because we live in Kenya and m many parents, you know, wish their children were doctors or, I don't know, those fancy career. But it's really inspiring that a communication expert can live their dream and, and, and work know with a reputable band so um, it's very important to me what I'm doing because I feel like through me I'm also setting an example to other professionals who want to be say publicists, uh, marketers, you know digital experts it's, it's not just like one thing you know fashion designer, uh, fashion publicist because I'm a music and entertainment publicist but then there's like film publicist, fashion publicist so I feel like it, it is important because uh, we need to have more of, of these kind of people when I started out I didn't know any publicist. I even didn't know what it was called. I was just doing the work and doing the work. And then one day we sat down with Dr. Sol and we said, Oh, we've actually been a publicist for a long time. We even didn't know that is that is what it was called. But now people know. If you tell somebody some a publicist, everybody knows what it is. So it's slowly changing that um, in the in Kenya, in Nairobi, and um, it's good because there are many opportunities. Yeah. Equality is not yet here with us. What challenges have you faced being a woman? What gender biased challenges have you faced being a woman? Gender bias, but I never take it very seriously. It's because I take work seriously. So sometimes somebody will ignore you or want to treat you in a certain way just because you're a woman. So I always try to, to divert my attention not to them but now I, I do it to work because it's just like um, they won't take you seriously until they see what you've done so for me it's always like I need to show them what I can do because then sometimes also people will refer you to other people like someone will say please take a Nikos contact she's a publicist what 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 then when you meet that person and you've seen their contact um, then they start sending you funny messages at night yeah. and you haven't even started working together so at the same time, as a professional, you can't shut out opportunities and this kind of people because that's what they're used to, but you need to show them that actually that's not how it works. Because then what I do is I just keep it professional and I'll just try to do the job and now I'll even try and do it better so that they know me for that, so that they remember, oh, okay, I tried to, to get that girl, but she was just ignoring me, but actually she did a good job. So I always try to end the conversation and, and try to show them like this is the work I can do. What mistakes have you done in life and what have you learned from them? Everybody has made mistakes in life and also at work. So, um, I mean, you make I make mistakes every day. Like sometimes I send press releases and because I send a lot, I miss to see even some typos and it really annoys me because you send an email to like thousands of people yeah. and then um, a small word has been uh, mis mis like Like I've just miss the, the typing or something so those kind of small mistakes are really annoying and you're like it's so small why did time miss it so um i mean just this one mistake but then there are many other mistakes that, you know that i make but i just try to to, to look at the brighter side and, and you want to be better because the thing is um also when you make mistakes some people um want to use that against you and they want to forget everything you've done which was good because they want to hold that to, to, to you but then they don't remember the good things you did so um, also making mistakes um, is a chance to reinvent yourself yeah because then only fools make the same mistake like three times yeah so I always try to get above it but it happens what challenges do you feel as a business person diminish your optimism in Africa and what better can can be done to make opportunities accessible to all? No challenges. Nothing diminishes my optimism in Africa. Mm -hmm. So nothing can make me not be optimistic about Africa. Okay. What, what better can be done? 
Um, I mean, Africans can work harder, mm -hmm. you know, and um, take over loads of business and entrepreneurship for themselves. Because mm -hmm. I think there's um there, there, there's a there's an expectation that Africa is the future. This country has uh, you know the better economy in Africa, the fastest growing. So a lot of um, companies, corporates from Western worlds are coming to um, you know set pace in Africa. But even I'm not saying they shouldn't come, but I'm just saying that as many people come to invest in Africa, Africans should also invest in themselves. So you have to start small. You don't have to start like a big company business because you can't start that from nowhere. But you can just start um, from where you are. It's about the mindset and it's about um, skills, not just ma physical materials. So sometimes I would advise Africans to st you know, start collectives of like-minded individuals. What things do you wish you'd have learned sooner in life? How could I have learned sooner in life? Um, I don't think there's anything because if I learned them sooner, I wouldn't use them then. It's just like human beings have to wait until a certain point to realize something. It's because from the time you're a child, you're told this, with your mom tells you this, your sisters tell you this, and you always think, my mom is so harsh. But then when you grow older, you start to, to think of everything she taught you, or rather I start to think of everything I taught, she taught me. And I start to, to thank God, I'm like, wow, if, if she didn't teach me this, I would, wouldn't be at this position. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, uh, personally in my life, I am okay, because everything I learned, I've learned it at a certain point. And, and even though I learned some stuff a long time ago, I feel like I was still not in a position to use them because I wasn't wise enough. So like with age, Sometimes comes um, wisdom, not sure. just maturity. So for me, I think it's coming with wisdom as well. What would you tell the youth aspiring to make meaning in life? You can't really wake up one day and um, you're the best in whatever you're doing, be, be it music, be it, be it sports, be it art. So it's working progress. You know, you have to keep working, working hard, and then when one day, say, maybe you get a phone call and somebody says, "We want you to do this job," you'll be ready because you've been preparing yourself all this time. So um, young people out there need to to get themselves ready for their big opportunities, for their big breaks by practicing. What is your parting shot? My parting shot is um, work hard, but don't forget to be smart, because at times I think people take too much time. Um, um, and too many hours working, 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 and not taking time to um, be smart enough to also, you know, get help, get assistance, get to know people. So it's not just about how hard you work, but even the team around you. So you can also do everything yourself. So it's smart to start something and collaborate with other people. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been nice having you. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of the show. This is I Live Africa. We've been having Aniko Owoko, the publicist of Saudi Soul and an entrepreneur. Till next time, see you. Jambo, jambo. E jambo, wa toto, wa Africa.